Today we're going to talk about how to write an ending that leaves your reader with a deeper understanding. We're going to write a powerful and purposeful ending for our narrative. When I think about that, I always go back to one of my favorite reality TV shows, and that is Duck Dynasty. If you've ever seen the very ending of a Duck Dynasty episode, Willie Robertson is at the end of the episode. He does a beautiful job summarizing the whole episode and what had happened in a in a way that is powerful and personal. And he also relates it back to the theme and, and the the lesson of the story or the lesson of the episode. So when you're writing your powerful personal narrative, these are some things you want to keep in mind. Number one, uh, it should resolve a problem. Now remember, it doesn't always work out for everybody in the end. Sometimes the ending will be a sad ending and we'll see that in everything will be okay from our mentor text. But it should in some way resolve a problem, but some people may not be happy about the way the resolution is. The other thing you want to think about is that these are the last words your readers will hear, and you must bring your whole message to light. It should your, leave your readers with a profound understanding of whatever your theme is. And also, you want to make sure your endings go back to that all-important question, what is my story really about? What is the theme? Okay, so here are a couple options of how you can end your story with an anchor chart. You can end it with a strong feeling, give them a very strong image, with some humor, a lesson that you've learned. You can give them a hope or a wish. In the future, I will do this. And here are some thought prompts that you can use. I will always remember this because, or this changed me because. So um, let's take a look at our mentor text and see how they have created their powerful personal ending. So let me read this to you, and you will see and kind of get a feel for how this is a strong conclusion. He uh, goes back to his theme about how being different is is not always easy. He's different than the rest of his family into what he thinks a man should be. So he says, at the supper table that night, I don't speak. I don't look at my brother's face or my father's or my mother's. I look at the tree branch outside the kitchen window where the deer once hung. My brother is saying something about taking me to the driving range tomorrow. He will teach me to hit a golf ball. I won't go with him. I don't want to, him to teach me anything anymore. In the fall, he will go off to college. I will be 11. I will be alone with my parents, alone without my brothers. I get up from the table and no one stops me. In the living room, which is dark, I sit for a long time thinking. I think about my kitten. I think about the pretzel can. I think about what it will be like not having any brothers around. I feel alone and small and frightened. And then all of a sudden, I don't feel those things. All of a sudden, it's as if Paul had already left and I'm on my own and I know some things so clearly that I will never have to ask another older brother to help me figure them out. I will never work for Dr. Milk. I will not go hunting with my father. I will decide for myself what kind of boy I am, what kind of man I will become. So in your Google Docs, I want you to work on your conclusion and write. make sure that uh, you are picking one of these strategies, that you are writing a powerful and personal, purposeful, excuse me, ending.